All right, everyone, it is interview time. And we are here with repeat guest Naomi Slater. And we are here to talk about fantasies within relationships. Now, this might be, you know, your definition of a relationship, it's up to you. Maybe it's been two days. Maybe it's a one night stand. Maybe it's a long term relationship. Maybe you're married. I don't know. I think we're going to talk talking more about like partnered. Maybe you like know each other a little bit better here. And I don't know. I've shared some fantasies with some new partners where I'm like, hey, we have about five hours to Sometimes be together. And you have nothing to lose. <laughs> so you're like, why not? Like, yeah, let me I tell you about all, all the things I'm going to do. I don't care what you think. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, without further ado, you heard, heard a little bit about Naomi in the bio. And Naomi, can you please tell us how you got to where you are today in the field of sexuality? Yeah. So thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk about fantasies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I started out actually uh, after I was already married with two kids and we started experiencing some difficulty sexually in our relationship. I had totally lost my libido. I was not really so interested in the sex. I still wanted to be with my partner, but I was not really in the mood. And my partner started to to practice Tantra and I was resisting. I didn't really want to join in, but eventually I realized that this issue is not going to go away and that sexuality is something really important in relationship. If you're going to have a healthy, happy relationship, you want to be having healthy sex. So eventually we went through this process together, which was both each of us really exploring our sexuality with our own selves and then kind of bringing that together and exploring together and deepening our connection. And um, that was essentially what led me to become a Tantra practitioner and to really work with couples and women, uh, helping them to really unleash their sexuality, explore their sexuality, deepen their passion. Um, and uh, yeah, it really is my passion to do this work. Yeah. And you're good at it. This is your second time <laughs> on the show. And I've known Naomi for a while, like at least 13 years, we found out um, when I lived in Israel. And uh, you're an amazing human. And so is your partner. And um, yeah, thank you for coming back and oh, talking about fantasies. You. Yeah. The, fantasies are, are, I think, something that can apply to everyone, even if you're a little bit timid about it, which I have been because I have these fantasies that I've only kept in my head a lot of times, right? That I'm like, I can't share this share with anyone. On podcast. But then I shared it on the podcast because it's a shameless sex. But I right. was, I wasn't ashamed, but I was always almost embarrassed, right? Like, I don't know, what, what will they think? So my question though, is what are some of the other reasons people avoid sharing fantasies with their partners? Yeah. So there are lots of reasons. One is that some people's fantasies involve other people. And if you're in a relationship, that might be really triggering to your partner because maybe that's something that they don't, you know, really know how to uh how to deal with. If you're, you know, fantasizing about another woman or another man or a threesome or whatever it might be. So that's that's one reason. Of course, anger, jealousy, insecurities that people might feel you know, hearing their partner's fantasies that might, you know, really piss you off. You might feel really insecure, you know, that your partner wants to be with someone else that can make you feel really, really uncomfortable and maybe just insecure about the relationship in general. And of course, what you said, April, in, in terms of feeling ashamed and guilty about our fantasies, um, which is, I think is very interesting because oftentimes our fantasies will include aspects of guilt and feeling ashamed because that's actually what the tur the turn on is in that you know kind of this guilty feeling uh that it's you know you're being naughty or you're doing something that you're not supposed to do will actually create the turn on um oftentimes not always mm -hmm. sexy taboo well, I, and we mm -hmm. both we've shared this on our podcast many times we both have some taboo fantasies that turn us on it doesn't necessarily mean we want to act on them some of them we might i mean that there's a an array of them and i can't on the step fantasy nope no or me with the rape fantasy i'm yeah. not interested no. in in acting that out i'm not even interested in role playing that and some people might be interested in role playing it um, i'm pretty sure most people that have a rape fantasy don't want to be raped so mm -hmm. just you know just a disclaimer about that that like i think that's a good example though of how our spank bank can just be our spank bank mm -hmm. um, or the things that we want to actually do in role play might differ from what we actually want to experience in life outside of that. So there's this diverse array of experiencing fantasy, sexual connection, um, and we'll get into like, you know, well, actually, let's just dive right into the next piece here. So 
Yep. Um, so why is expressing or playing with fantasies more helpful than repressing them? Um, and like, why, why is it more important or, or helpful? I would say to share this with partners, uh, as opposed to withholding them, like April was talking about earlier, like not sharing with the world. Yeah. So I think that repressing them is essentially repressing emotions that we have in our system. And the more that we repress our emotions, the less you know, authentic our relationships will be, the more inhibition we'll, we'll experience in our relationships. So it's not that we have to share all of our fantasies with our partner. We can, of course, keep some of them to ourselves. But if we're keeping all of our fantasies off the table with our partner, we're hiding aspects of ourselves, which essentially creates some sort of a disconnect between us and our partner. Yeah. And, and that over time really leads to kind of feeling unfulfilled in the relationship. Furthermore, fantasies are really a window into our erotic world. And the more that we can really connect to our fantasies and kind of understand them a bit more deeply, we understand what our turn-ons are. And, and April, what you said about, you know, you have this rape fantasy, that doesn't mean that you want to be raped. Yes, of me. course. Yeah, yeah, April, April's a oh, step sorry, fantasy. sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm the rape fantasy. fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. She's got the step parent fantasy right, right. thing. Yeah. Step parent, yeah. odd one, yeah. odd one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, my actually, mine's actually more common. Um, and and I remember, I think Chris Ryan talked about that, right? It's like a pretty common mm-hmm. fantasy. Uh, and April's still, I would, I would say, it's less common. And yet, like, look at all the step porn that's online. Like, it's actually not that uncommon. I had a milf thing for a long time growing up, like a milf, like I would watch milf porn. Like, you want to have sex with the milf? I, I just liked watching milfs not- have sex. Oh. <laughs> Oh, nice. I don't know what it was. <laughs> and then I explored the guilt thing. I was like, oh, no, no, that's <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> no, that's it's not that milk. one. Just milk. Yeah, just yeah. milk. So, so yeah. anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so I also have I had a I, I kind of set up the stage for a fantasy with my with my partner not so long ago. And I have this fantasy of him of me watching him be with another woman. Now. Is this fantasy? It's never actually happened, not to say that it couldn't, but is this a fantasy that I actually want to experience? The truth is, is I'm not sure, but I really, really enjoyed the role play of pretending that I was a woman that I knew that he wanted. And it it was a turn on for both of us. But you have to you have to be kind of willing to get over your insecurities of your partner wanting someone else in order to be able to kind of step into that role. Yeah. So what you're talking about, because we've done episodes on cuckolding, you're is and I'm not gonna say I it's, think it's a cuck queen. Cuck a cuck cuck a cuck queen. Cuck queen. Cuck queen. So That's you would be the, you would be so instead of being the a cuckold, which is the you know, you generally a penis owning partner in a heterosexual relationship watching their Volvo owning partner getting fucked or, or having sex with someone else, <laughs> the the opposite side would be or or another version of this would be the female cuckold would so you're a cuck queen. Mm. Ooh, that's just so you know, like that. that's Ooh. a nice okay. term. We, it took us a while to learn about this week because this is something that this is new to us. Yeah, we've had I'm not multiple familiar. people on our podcast. Yeah. yeah, so now you have a if you want to take on the name, <laughs> yeah. And so, so my question about that is, um, and we'll get into some tips on how to share that. But mm-hmm. is your definition of this uh, someone who wants who has a fantasy about watching your partner have sex with someone else, another woman? I think is what you said. Is this something that you want to actually act out or is it something that you want to just talk about or um, or like maybe do some sort of light role play? Like what how, what is that? How does that resonate with you? So for me personally, I feel like actually living out the fantasy with him without actually doing it, you know, for real satisfies that part of me. I don't feel like I need to at this point in my life go any further than that. That's, I think, what the beauty of part of what the beauty of sharing our fantasies with our partner does is that instead of feeling like we have to actually go live it out, you know, with another person or whatever that might be, you're able to kind of live it out with your partner. And that creates this kind of feeling of satisfaction, which I think is amazing. It it brings this kind of new sense of passion into the relationship. Yeah, that's true. And sometimes there could be scenarios where you actually do act them out. Like you may have this fantasy about a threesome, right? And not, not only watching, but participating. And then maybe your partner's like, I'm so down. And then you end up 
having a threesome and in the middle of it, you could be like, wow, this should have just remained a fantasy because I <laughs> didn't, I'm not as into it as I thought I was going to be. And that's okay because if you do end up acting it out, because I, there's been times where I've uh, had fantasies and I've ended up acting them out. And I was like, oh no, this is not really what I'm into. Check that box. That's done. <laughs> that's so, yeah. so, which brings me to a question about sharing with your partner when you want to share these fantasies. In what ways can we do that? Do we need like a, a, a whiteboard or like a PowerPoint presentation with a laser pointer or like we need a mediator. Yeah. What, 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 how should we go about this? Yeah. So there are a couple of ways. There's one way that I really like, which first requires you to write down one of your peak sexual experiences in your life. So think about a real sexual experience that you had that really, really turned you on and write about it in full detail. And then you can kind of read what you wrote and understand from that, you know, what are some of the, the elements of that peak encounter that you can maybe bring into your relationship? Um, and if if it's the first time that you're doing it, of course, you want to try something that won't be very, very triggering for your partner. Uh, maybe it was, you know, that that the person was scratching your back, you know, and your partner doesn't do that. And that's something that you fantasized about or, or that, you know, you experienced that in your peak uh, experience. So you could start with that. So kind of picking it apart and finding aspects of it that you can bring into your relationship. I like that. So I, I would also offer a PowerPoint presentation just, <laughs> just for the sake of doing Wait, one. Didn't you do that once? I did. She did do that I did, once. Not for fantasies, oh but my. for things that I wanted to have in my relationship. A, a, a. More this is what we were happy. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to where we are right now. So remember this picture when we were super happy? Anyway, I like that. I, well, I think that the well, PowerPoint. No, no, I, I like the PowerPoint, but I bet so you, you wrote things down before you got really clear. This yeah. wasn't particularly about fantasies, but like right, the process of writing out your fantasies one in itself can probably be sexy. Yes. Like, I mean, imagine if I would sit there and actually write out like Amy's ultimate, you know, like rape fantasy that I, again, as I said, I don't want to even do role play in that, but that's just me not judging people who want to do that. But that would turn me on because mm -hmm. I use that in my spank bank. And you can yeah. read it like erotica to your partner. Oh, yeah. Or, 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 or I can read you it. You can. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. can share it with your partner. But of course that you kind of have to feel comfortable enough to be able to read out. Because again, this is a real experience that you're writing down. And then from that real experience, which was a peak sexual experience for you, you can understand a bit more about your erotic nature and your fantasies. Mm, so it's not, like it's that. not necessarily writing out your fantasies. It's writing out like thinking, okay, can you think about a time where you had the most amazing sex? You were so turned on and so hot and you just, there was so much passion there. Okay. So what was it about that experience that created that reaction within you, that created that arousal, that erotic nature to really come alive. And then when you write that out, you can really identify what fantasies you have and that you can share with your partner. Okay. So, so it can okay. be role play. It can be perhaps dominance and submission. It can be sexy talk. It can be pretending that you're strangers in a bar and you can actually do this and then go That's and have sex one. in the bathroom. You know what I mean? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although my germophobia just I know. kicked in. I'm like, I'm like fucking in the bathroom. I take a long time to warm up. I'd be more like make out in the bathroom and like me like it's maybe like, some grabby grabby, but like <laughs> you can do that <laughs> too. Like you take it where yeah. you want it to go. Yeah. But I feel like airplane, uh, like it'd be hot on an airplane, but the bathrooms are so damn small. No. You know what I once, you know airplane, what I once did? I don't think on, so. <laughs> what I once did on an airplane, I have to out this. So I, on, once on an airplane, I have, well, I have two really good airplane stories. But I they, know one of them. And they're actually not fantasies. Like I never thought about this before. I don't give a fuck about the mile high club. It's never been in my spank bank. But one, um, uh, commercial airline that I was on is a commercial airline. And for some reason, I was in some seats that had this curtain. I don't know why it had a curtain over our area. I don't know why. And the partner I was with at the time, this was many years ago. I think I, I think I had a vibrator on me. I think there was a vibrator in there. Like, and it was just two seats. There were the curtain, but I'm pretty sure I definitely maybe possibly vibrated in the seat. So um, don't sue me. I won't tell you the airline. I can't get in trouble for that. It happened a long time ago. <laughs> I'm looking for a curtain. And the other, the other curtain story I've shared, it's not a fantasy having sex with a pilot while he's flying the plane. No big deal. But it was just a two-seater plane. But that was, but those are not, like, when I think back to them, 
they don't really turn me on. They're not what you're talking about. This like ultimate peak experience. They're like cool stories, but yeah. they're not like my ultimate peak experiences are like, you know, getting bent over on someone's knee in a naughty little schoolgirl outfit and being told that if I'm a bad girl, I'm going to be punished with probably like an anal plug in my ass. And that's really hot to me. So. There you go. There you go. So that tells you a lot about your fantasies. It's not the airplane. <laughs> so, well, here's the thing. What if Amy says this to her partner and... And what if they're uncomfortable with, with mm -hmm. hearing this? Like what it, it, she feels comfortable enough to share this and then, um, and exploring is different, but what, what do we do if my, our partners shut down or, or get or, they're like, or, that's weird. Or they, they start running. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, what you could do is ask them, okay, so what are your fantasies? You know, maybe you think mine are weird. What are yours? You know, why don't you share with me? And, uh, and then you can kind of start to flesh them out a bit because everybody has fantasies. The, w the, the question is if they're willing to actually share them. I have a question because what you're saying, the willing part. So I have a question about that to piggyback on April's question. We have received sex questions from listeners who are like, my partner wants to hear my fantasies. I just freeze up. I don't mm -hmm. know what they are. I have no, I have no clue. So like, mm -hmm. they go blank. Um, and so what would your advice be for uh, this would be a two part question for that person, as well as the partner who wants to ask the questions, you know, obviously they can't be pressured. Like, Tell me your fantasies. Yeah. Um, and that, but like, so what would your advice be for those two people? Yeah. So there's a, a much easier way to kind of start exploring fantasies. And it's through asking two questions. One is what do you want to do to me? So asking your partner, what is it you want to do to me? And for a lot of people that can be, a very strange question. Maybe they don't know. <laughs> and the other question is, what do you want me to do to or for you? So this is kind of a way to, to kind of ease into exploring our desires and fantasies in a way that might not be so triggering. And then, of course, when you get answers to those questions, you create consent. So just because my partner wants to do something to me, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm ready for him to do that. Maybe there are parts of it that I'm not ready to do, or but there are other things that I can do, or maybe I'm willing to do half of what he wants, you know, to do. Um, so you create consent through mm -hmm. asking these questions. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, yeah it's like consent, per, you know, permission, not just like you have to do this thing with me right now. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of create some scenarios here. So like, what if scenarios? The first one is going to be more related to a partner who is a yes, and they're like, I want, I'm open to exploring this fantasy. So I want to try role play as a, a student who gets hit on by my hot Pilates teacher. So what are and my partners? Are yes. They're like, fuck yeah, let's try that. That sounds great. Or like, let's explore that. Talk about that more. And what are some ways that we can start to actually do the role play part of this? Well, oh, and mean, by the way, I want to say this, even though we know it's problematic, we're not saying that yoga teachers or Pilates teachers should, should have hit on their students. So I just got to say that part. <laughs> again, again, this is coming back to the whole idea of feeling guilt and shame around our fantasies. And sometimes those fantasies that we have, part of what makes them erotic for us is the fact that there's guilt and shame in them. So, mm -hmm. so that's totally fine. Uh, if, you know, to create that kind of a fantasy, which might not be appropriate, but it doesn't matter. So, you know, this, this is part of essentially acting out our fantasies with, with someone that we feel safe with, uh, and of course, creating consent around that. So if there's a full body, yes, to doing that, then of course you just go into role play. You know, you have one person, you know, you have to maybe uh, take some acting lessons or. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm so bad at acting. April will be, April will be so good at this. this is like her jam. Yeah. I could use some accents for days. <laughs> so accents you... can work for sure. Costumes are super important. Yeah. So we've done some role play where, um, where I will actually set up the scene. So there's a scene to be set. I put costumes on the bed. I create, you know, atmosphere. I put on some music. So there is a lot to be said for really um, paying attention to the details. So if you want to really throw yourself into a fantasy world, you need to change things. You know, you can't just keep things as they are and expect this fantasy to, to really come to life. So if you want it to come to life, you need attention to detail, costumes. Um, like you said, changing your voice a bit, changing even your personality and going for it. 
It sounds so fun to me, actually. Yeah. You would be so good at this. I know. Is like you're totally your jam. I'm, yeah, I'm envisioning you like you know a night in yeah. Paris. And, oh my God. And yeah. She, yeah. yeah. And totally even like, though it's like super cliche, you know, like a little French maid outfit or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> But that sounds so, I I mean, I love a beret. <laughs> yeah, you two wore one the other day. I wore one the really other good. day. I was like, hello, my French is coming out. Okay, so. Well, and when, oh. I just want to add one thing about that too is... um. For at least for me, not taking it too seriously, and I think Midori oh, said that before. Yeah. Is like adult the, play, adult is play. Yeah, adult play is what she said. And you're talking about costumes, and I think Midori was saying like Batman and Catwoman or yeah. something. And but like <laughs> you know, if it's like feels ridiculous for me, sometimes the role play thing, I'm like, oh my god, I'm a terrible actor. Or you show up with a pizza box, like I want to fuck the pizza delivery yeah. person, <laughs> and then the you show up to with the with the dildo and in the, the harness, box, yeah, in the box. Well, that's, of a just, pizza. that's like adding play. But she also was talking about like it's okay if it's awkward and you know and kind of clunky. And I think I talked on the podcast about when I was the um, I role played a a sex worker from Amsterdam, mm-hmm. but I'm not good with accents. Like mm-hmm. if April was that, she would be doing like some Dutch accent. And she'd be really great at it or something or like I don't know I mean it's not I'd just go Dutch people that Russian, are probably red, like this yeah Russian okay so for me I'm not good with accents so I was uh actually a woman from California named Callie <laughs> that was my my sex worker name who was in the red light district welcoming my partner in there and like you know gave them a bath and then and that just felt more natural to me that I could take on this role that fit me and if it, and then at times I would just laugh this is ridiculous and then <laughs> once he came over he's like I need to I need to do a, a, a rebuttal or like you know meet you where you're at and he showed up with a, a tool belt on and a massage table. And he was nothing else, just the tool belt. So his ass was out. Yeah, he was, and so he was the, constru- the construction worker who was like, excuse me, ma'am, do you need something to be <laughs> fixed in your house? And then ended up actually using some of the tools on me, just saying. So Whoa, wow. Like, yeah. Ouch, that sounds um, painful. No, no, no. Okay, not not <laughs> sharp ones. <laughs> not sharp ones. Although you can do. Like you can drag them on the skin of an arm. Yeah, there's various things you can do. I'm not talking about like a saw or something. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm good. I'm relieved. I'm relieved. Yeah, Yeah, I'm just saying like the diversity of ways that you can play with it and adding the sex toys in the tool belt. Yeah, that's what I would do. All kinds of different ones. I think I'd be really good at this. I need to maybe start. Okay, so we need to get you a tool belt. I know. Well, (laughs) yeah. Okay, so let's talk about threesome fantasy for example okay that's a huge one people love but what if this fantasy is i'm super into it but my partner is not fully a yes Mm -hmm. they're open to light explorations or ex like exploring it lightly or variations some form of variations like cut queening yeah so i think i think the cut queening thing did I even say that right? <laughs> I think that's I think right. So. Yeah. Queen, it's spelled, yes. Cuck old and cuck weaning? Yeah, cuck weaning. So. We're going to go with yes. Cuck weaning? Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's like kind of the, the light version. You know, it's 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 non-committal. Nothing actually really happens where, you know, where nobody is actually having sex with somebody else. But it really is a way to explore how it makes you feel. And I think if it makes you feel uncomfortable, then that's something uh, I think that you should self-reflect on because it's not actually happening. So it's natural for different fantasies and our partner's fantasies to trigger us. The question is, okay, do we then blame our partner for having that fantasy? Or do we take responsibility for how their fantasy makes us feel? Which is essentially what you want to do. You want to take responsibility for what you feel and say, okay, your fantasy makes me feel really uncomfortable. It makes me feel insecure. It makes me feel like you don't want me anymore. Okay, that's not necessarily your partner's fault. But you can take responsibility for those emotions and share them with your partner. And actually, that will probably make you feel a lot better as long as your partner doesn't take your feelings personally. Right. So if you share your feelings with your partner and they're like, why do you feel that way? You know, it's just a fantasy. Like, why are you getting all worked up about it? No. So the other person that's that's hearing those emotions uh, needs to say, OK, I, I hear you. You know, I understand how it might make you feel, you know, how it might make you feel that way. Uh, and maybe you can still do it. Maybe just kind of venting about how it makes you feel will will o- help you open up to really experiencing it. And, well, and I was I think of the middle ground, especially with threesomes or like some sort of like or like a gangbang fantasy or something. Um, you know, and so say that was really actually like April and I are dating, and I really want to do a gangbang fantasy. I want to be gangbang, and I want April to put it together, and I want her to be part of the gangbang. And April's like, 
Yeah, I'm like somewhat. I would call I'm, Billy Prasida. Yeah, call Billy. Okay. He, well, we have the answer to that. Yes. Call Billy Prasida, everyone, from the Manhor podcast, because he can organize gangbangs. <laughs> yes, um, he he's pretty good at it. Uh, we have not experienced it, but we've heard good things. But uh, okay, so, but I'm, so it's important to me, and I actually want to do it. April is like, I don't know if I fully want to do it, but I am open to some light exploration. And I think a, her just actually trying the gangbang when she's not a full yes would be a lot. <laughs> Um, wow, that might be a lot but like you know we watch gangbang porn and we have sex as if we're in that role there you know there's other en- entities and other humans we hire a cam person or you know sex worker of some sort to be a part of the experience so you're safe because safety is a thing right yeah. if you're going to explore with other humans you want to make sure it's safer sex is happening well, mm-hmm. there's body that, fluids and things all parties comfortable comfortability is yeah, accounted also. for right like if you're like I'm, a, I'm, I'm open to a light exploration but the full gangbangs a lot or take it out of gangbangs. Let's go back to threesomes. Like even that, some people are like, it's hot. I'm not fully comfortable actually doing this, mm-hmm. but I want to stay open to trying some variation of that. And I think that there are ways that we can get really creative mm-hmm. uh, of that. I don't know, maybe get a sex doll. I'm not sure. Like, you know, there's so, so many ways or maybe the threesome. Sex dolls are fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you could play with one. We have, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that is a fantasy. This it goes back to my fantasy of having, you know, watching my my husband be with another woman. But I watched him with a, a sex doll, and that was like, whoa, awesome. That, yeah, that was actually a really, really big turn on for me. And it's it's all I, I'm discovering this stuff because I'm more open and willing to explore. And it hasn't been, um, you know, in the beginning of our of our relationship. I think you know, just the thought of him wanting to be with another woman, I think would have really, really uh, angered me and pissed me off and made me feel insecure, but I'm not in that place anymore. And it's been a process. So yeah, there's so many ways to explore this. And there's um, a big difference between, like you said, actually doing it and fantasizing and, and, you know, playing with that fantasy with your partner. So again, I don't know how I would react if we were actually in a threesome and my husband was fucking another woman. I don't know if it would be a turn on for me in reality. It definitely is a fantasy of mine. Will I explore it at some point? Honestly, I really don't know. But right now I'm happy with the role play. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it really does fulfill me on many levels. So for me, because I have, I think some, some triggers around being insecure. Am I enough? If my partner brings this up and really wants to have a threesome uh, and wants to participate and have me watch him fuck another woman, um, I would probably be like, what's, what's wrong with me? Am I not enough? So I think approaching, Mm -hmm. I like what you mentioned about years ago, you would have been pissed off, but you're in a different place. So in terms of relational security, is it something if you are tend to be a jealous person or you have past wounding that maybe brings up triggers for you uh, if someone shared being with other people that you're partnered with? What, I mean, what are the ways? Is it just something that should stay in that zone of just talking about it or and rule out any sort of possible uh, exploration that's physical? Or is it something that you I mean, how do you work on your relationship to make it secure enough to, to explore these things? So I don't I don't think that there's any real clear cut answer here, because I think we kind of live in this illusion that if we stay monogamous, um, you know, if we don't open up the relationship, that things are going to be fine. But that's not true. There's always going to be this element of the third in our relationship, whether we're monogamous or not. And um, there are plenty of monogamous relationships that, of course, break up and they are uh, non-monogamous relationships that that make it work. So it's not that one is going to lead to happiness, happiness, and the other will lead to uh, dread and destruction. It doesn't always work like that. So I think I think a lot of it has to do with creating consent. So I think mm-hmm. if one person feels one way and the other person feels another way, and you just don't see eye to eye, then that's an issue. But if you can if you can start to create consent around things that you are willing to do. Okay. Whether it be through role play or with another person physically, maybe, maybe you just want to kind of get horny with a third person, you know, and you say that, that penetration is off the table or oral sex is off the table, whatever it might be. 
right? But it's about communicating and creating consent and creating space for each other's emotions because this stuff is triggering. Yeah. And I think that brings us to um, the aftercare piece, which I think is really important. So the post fantasy, either sharing or even more intense, exploring it aftercare, you know, how do we tend to ourselves and our partners or each other or the relationship or maybe multiple partners? um, What can it look like after we either just verbally share or we actually start to explore the fantasies? So I'll, I'll share with you just the way that I, we ended our, um, you know, role play fantasy of me being another woman and my husband fucking this other woman. And I was pretending. And at the very end, he said, wow, I really loved fucking you. And I looked at him and I was just like, just remember who you actually fucked. (laughs) (laughs) Just remember. So, and and we've actually talked about it a number of times. We talked about it just the other day when we were on the beach and he was like, you know, it's so interesting. You know, I brought this to him. It's not like he told me this was a fantasy of his, but I kind of picked up on this connection and decided like, let's play with it because I don't, I don't think it's healthy for him to be repressing these emotions. It's not something that he, he told me, he's like, it's not like I think about this on a regular basis. It's not like I'm thinking about her or anything like that. But since you brought it up, it made me realize that, that, yeah, it's like, you actually made this fantasy of mine come true. And I was like, wow, you know, we've been married for 14 years and I'm still making your fantasies come true. How amazing is that? And it was just for me connecting to my own intuition about both what I wanted, like I, I, you know, like I said, this is a fantasy of mine, but also what he wants, even if he didn't vocalize that to me, it was just kind of this innate feeling that I would rather him express that as opposed to repress it. Mm -hmm. Now, um, other ways that you can, you know, yeah, it's just talking about it. It's just talking about how it made us feel. So once you finish this role play, you can say, well, how, how was it for you? You know, how did it make you feel? Was there a trigger there for you? Was there something that you didn't like? Was there parts that you really liked? So it's just being open about it. Yeah. And I feel like, uh, so that conversation itself can be sexy. Like, you know, the, the conversation about like, so how was that? And then you're kind of like doing a recap. I mean, as long, of course, if there was like some parts where you're like, that was terrible, then that might, been, that then there's repair there. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I would imagine, I feel, I don't, I don't know if I've done that after sharing fantasies before I've done that after doing an actual exploration, um, of like some threesome stuff and, and with sex positive people where we were able to sit down and be like, you know, how did that feel for everyone? Um, and I think that in that itself can be a little bit like, Oh, this hey. is like fun. We're kind of like reliving some of the things. So yeah. Um, communication is such a big part of yeah. sexuality. It really is. And it's kind of Huge. a pain in the ass one too, because if you just want to like dip out, but if you want to be like a good partner and and, or and lover be, and or lover or be, I mean part I think a partner even if it's just a one night stand right yeah. you're still with a partner that you're being intimate with so it's like communication is key and it's kind of like phrasing things in a way that can be accepted right not like you did this wrong or you something right. you know I, I so having well, coming well you could say when you did place. this it made me feel this Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I, I felt this. Yeah. And I think that's an, an opportunity to talk about like, you know, feelings and you know, we're big advocates for like, you don't necessarily make me feel like I'm responsible for how I feel over here. And but I was triggered when this happened. Yeah. And I want to explore that. More. I felt this though. This right. happened. There's, the truth is when this happened, I felt you yeah. know, sad, anxious, yeah. like I'm not lovable, like I'm not important, or I felt fucking amazing yeah. on top of the or, world. Yeah, you made me feel fucking amazing. That's yeah. when you made yeah, me yeah, feel. You can make come me feel yeah, damn it. You make me feel <laughs> yeah. like a natural woman. <laughs> had woman. To. I had to do <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, nice. Oh, wow. You have a band now. <laughs> Ooh. This is so fun. Oh, yeah. Man. Communication oh. is so, so important when it comes to sexuality. And actually, when I work with couples and with women, that's one of the most basic tools that I work with is how to communicate about our emotions. Because if you're not able to communicate about your desires, if you're not able to identify what it is you feel, then you're not going to feel safe in really any sexual encounter. Because you're constantly going to feel like somebody is going to step on your boundaries or do something that you don't really want them to do, but maybe you you don't even know what you want and what you don't want. So you need to start exploring what you feel and then, of course, communicating what you feel to your partner. And through creating that consent, so through communicating, of course, about our emotions and then creating consent, we can actually surrender 
into some really erotic uh, sexual encounters. So if you can't surrender, you're just going to be tense and that's going to prevent really any sort of peak sexual experience. Yeah. I'm so happy that we got to talk about this with you because we've had other shows on fantasies, but we haven't gone in depth really um, to this level. And I think this is important because it really does apply to almost every single human out there. Sometimes you don't even know that you have a fantasy hiding deep within you somewhere Mm -hmm. until you start thinking about it. And then it's like Pandora's box can open up and you can really have fun with it. And get awkward, get weird, or try out the accent or the weird <laughs> costume, whether it's Batman or, or Robin or pizza Cat, guy, the pizza human, pizza human, <laughs> um, with a big old dildo in there yeah. or a small dildo. Oh, we like those two. Small one. Exactly. So in you, I know you do what you, as you mentioned, you work with couples and you work with uh, vulva owners out there. Um, you also have a podcast. So if folks want to find you, please tell them where they can find you yeah. and how they can work with you. Yeah. So one way to find me is just to check out my website, which is divinecouples.com. I'm actually launching a online course for women on January 11th. Uh, It's really a deep dive. It's a three month course. So if women are interested in learning about that, you can check it out on my website. Uh, You can email me at info at divinecouples.com. So there's, there are a couple of ways to get in touch with me. My podcast is also Divine Couples. So that's Easy. the best that's way. Easy. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. And check out your, your work is really cool. And we, we, um, had you on the last time. I don't know. Was it like before the pandemic during the it's pandemic? A while ago. It was a while ago, but, yeah. um, this, this topic is super juicy and, and, and fun. I think people are going to love it. Um, so thank you, Naomi. Thank you. Um, I adore you. And, I adore you guys. You're amazing. Yeah. I love your work. Send Thank my so love much. to everyone in Israel that I know <laughs> I will. Uh, because I Don't love say names, Israel. but we love you. We love you. <laughs> we love you. Um, so uh, to all of our beautiful shameless sex listeners, we call you the shameless sex revolutionaries. At least I do. I don't know if Amy does, but I do. I do. And I love you. And don't go yet, though. Don't go yet. No, uh, because we have a really juicy trailer Ooh. from uh, a <laughs> podcast that's in our network that we're so excited about cocktails and dirty discussions they were actually on our show number 187 about anal sex fuck boys and sex stories and it was in our top 10 episodes it still is I think it's it is to this day. 10, yeah uh, most downloaded episodes to this day so uh they are hilarious and they get down with some cocktails and some dirty discussions they actually that's talk the about the cocktail they're drinking they give you the yes. recipe for the cocktail that genius. they're drinking and then they talk about sex and it's awesome yeah yeah but here's the trailer to oh no the trailer's gonna start in a minute right we're, we're starting in one second but i, well, I want to say can we call it teaser now when we say like a trailer i just think of like it's i think of a movie trailer the trailer's gonna be sex Ooh, here's the movie trailer <laughs> Well, yeah, no, I guess we can call it a teaser, a sizzler. Ooh, a sizzler. Sizzler. A sizzler. Now I think of the restaurant. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, before we get to the tri- the sizzler, uh, I'm just going to invite you to review us on Spotify, review us on iTunes. It helps more people find folks like Naomi and all the wonderful educators and practitioners and other podcasters that we have on the show. And this is a free resource and it's free because of our sponsors who we hand select. We are so choosy about who we work with. We say no to a lot of people because we believe in the products that our sponsors have or make. So buy their shit, man. Buy their stuff. Amy hates when I say buy their shit, but it... You can buy their shit. It's great shit. shit. Yeah. (laughs) And that is why this podcast is free to you. So uh, because of them. And with that note there too, everyone. uh, So we are part of a wonderful podcast network, the Pleasure Podcast Network. And that's where this Sizzler trailer teaser is from. I don't even know how many podcasts we have in it, but they're all sex positive. They're fantastic. Uh, We have like almost... I think maybe 15 now or 16. Well, and just like we hand select our sponsors, our, these are hand selected or I guess not hand selected, but you know, personally selected, curated, that's a good word, um, podcast to be a part of this network. So check out all the podcasts in the Pleasure Podcast Network. And without further ado, shall we dive in, Chip? Yeah. Here we go. 